So welcome everybody to our teaching and learning and UX working group call for Wednesday, September 20th. Um, and let me actually share. I'll look at on the recording. Um, so uh, for today, as usual, we'll start off with announcements. So I just want to remind everybody about the Sakai virtual conference. And that is, I didn't put the date on here. Um, it's November 15th, um, which I believe is a Wednesday. And the call for proposals is currently open. So I'd just like to encourage everybody to um, submit if you have any ideas about um, things that you'd like to present, or maybe if you have folks on your campus that would like to show off a course or a particular strategy that they're using or, or really anything um, that you think would be noteworthy to share with, uh, with other folks in the Sakai community. So the, the CFP um, form, you can get to it from this link here off of the conference website. And um, we're soliciting lightning talk proposals primarily. Um, I've got a few uh, longer sessions that I've already reached out to folks to do. Um, but if you have an idea for something that takes longer than you know seven or so minutes for the lightning talks, just let me know in the proposal form and I'm happy to work you into the schedule because it's still kind of in flux. So it's very flexible at this point. Um, so if you have a thought for something that takes longer than a lightning talk, definitely open to those uh, suggestions. So please um, get your proposals in soon. I would ideally like to post at least your preliminary schedule by the end of this month. So um, I'm gonna put a few nudge reminders out there um, this week about submitting, but um, but we're, we want to get at least the main presentations locked in. Lightning talks can also always be added later if we have more that come in um, closer to the event. But uh, ideally, I'd like to get as much out there for folks to look at before they register as possible because hopefully it'll encourage people to register. Um, so let's see. I think those are all the announcements I have. Do you guys have any announcements? you want to share? Okay. Um, so we'll move on to our topic for today, which is um, we're going to take a look at Sakai 23. And um, we're going to take a closer look at the UI. But I thought that first I would start off with a quick recap of the slides that I presented at the virtual, sorry, not the virtual card, the SakaiCon conference over the summer. Um, just as kind of a refresher, if you haven't seen it in a while, I know I hadn't seen it in a while, so I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that was in 23. Um, so we'll just take a quick um, look at some of those features that I um, highlighted for folks back over the summer, and then we'll take a closer look at um, Sakai 23. And again, the, the main, big difference that you'll notice is the new portal UI for 23. Um, and we have a couple JIRAs that folks had asked us to um, to take a look at uh, that are related to the UI. So, um, so we'll look at those as well. Um, but if you have any other JIRAs that you would like us to talk about today, um, if we have time, please feel free to add them in the Etherpad and we'll get to as many as we can. And if we don't get to them today, we'll just bump them over to the next call and try to take them up then. Um, with that, let me go ahead and switch over to my slides. So these were, again, from SakaiCon, um, but I'll just kind of go through them really quickly. You may have caught this presentation already, so it'll be a little bit of a recap, but it's it's fairly short. Um, so the um, the big news in, in 23 is the new portal. If you've not already seen it, if you attended um, SakaiCon, we had the new portal um, on Tricycai where we hosted the event. So you may have seen it there if you hadn't seen it um, on QA or somewhere else. Um, so you can look at it on Tricycai. We've since branded it for Longsite. So it's not the vanilla Sakai branding anymore. We've got kind of the Longsite logo and stuff. But for the conference, we had just the um, Sakai uh, vanilla you know, out of the box branding. Um, and that's what you'll see on the nightly servers if you go there to check it out. Um, but you'll notice that the sites moved from the from along the top to over on the side, and we have the ability to pin things instead of um, 
favorites. You would have pinned sites. Uh, so that's kind of some changes there in the navigation. We also have these slide outs that happen um, when you go to view all of your sites. And you can pin and things from there, or pin and unpin things from there if you, if you like. Um, that can be done from the sidebar here and also from the all sites drawer. The account menu also slides out from the side and you've got some um, quick links there to tasks and calendar and grades. Um, and you can also get to your preferences in light and dark mode from there. And this is just a preview of what the dark mode looks like um, when you switch to it, if you choose to do that. And, um, oh, and that was it for, for the UI. So I moved on to other stuff that was new. And we'll return to the UI again. We'll look at it live. But I'll just, like I said, run through these slides first. So accessibility got some additional information you can um, have there to remind the instructor of any kind of special needs. That's in the um, the roster, I believe. Um, assignments now has a mobile friendly grader. So I don't know if you've ever tried to use the grader in um, mobile prior to 23, but it was not particularly pleasant <laughs> to use. Um, so now it's it's much easier. And it you see how the little grade submission floats? So if you've got a long submission, it kind of floats over here so you can access the grading panel from any point in the um, student submission. And then when you do have it, it pulls out also from the side. Um, and this is what it looks like on a mobile. So you'll see that it, it's actually functional on mobile, whereas it was difficult to use um, prior to that. And, um, and you can expand to see if there's a rubric attached, you can expand out the rubric to assign points and things. Um, so it's it's a much better experience for mobile grading. Um, the calendar got uh, some um, a connection to conversations. So if you are setting due dates in the conversations tool, those will now show up on the calendar if you check that box. So that, that connection didn't happen before, now it's there. Um, in the dashboard, it's now on by default. It was one of these um, stealth tools because it was still experimental, but we've now made it so it's not stealth by default. Now, you may or may not have turned it on at your institution. That's still an institutional decision if you wanted to use it or not. Um, it's eventually intended to replace overview, but there's still not 100% parity between the two. And some people prefer overview because their users are kind of accustomed to it. So um, you might want to phase it in slowly. There's sort of two different versions of dashboard. There's the dashboard that can show up in the home area for a user, and that's what we're seeing here. There's also the dashboard that can show up in a course, which looks slightly different um, within a course site. And, uh, and those are both, you could choose to um, have either both of those available for folks or just one or the other. Um, depending on, on what you set as the tools for the, the default set of um, home area tools. Um, but here I'm just showing it as a sort of a replacement for overview. So it's the first item in the list, meaning that it's the landing page when a user logs in. Um, in discussions, um, there's some new features here as well. You can now download the um, stats and grading. And um, you can also see when people reply or um, post something new. So a lot of times people will have a, an assignment where a student has to post and then reply to two other students. That's pretty common. So this way you can tell more easily if they actually did an original reply and then um, they authored a reply to somebody else or if it was just, you know, three replies to other people. So it, it lets you know that um, it splits those out for you. Um, in messages, you can now schedule when things will be sent. So if you have a message that you want to go out on a particular date and time, you can do that in advance. So you don't have to remember to send it at the moment that you want it to be sent. You can actually schedule those out in the future, which is kind of a handy little thing to have. 
um, the roster now displays the nickname. So if your users um, have a preferred name or something in the SIS and you're pulling that in as a nickname field, it now shows up in the roster. So uh, and it's important for a lot of folks that are using um, nicknames as the preferred name because um, students don't want to have their legal name shown everywhere. So they prefer their, their nickname. Um, the rubrics tool you can now export so you'll see these little PDF icons um, both in the manage rubrics and when you've graded a rubric you can export the graded version of it as well so that if you do it from manage rubrics it's just sort of the blank rubric um, but the, if you export from a pr particular student's graded submission then it shows you the selected items there so that's um, a way to kind of export those out as a printable savable item um, and there are a few other things that are new in rubrics i didn't do screen captures of all of these but um, there's a warning that lets you know when there's a mismatch between the um the rubric point value and the um like if you're associating it with an assignment or something and maybe the rubric's worth five points and the assignment's worth 100 points it lets you know so that you can make an adjustment if you need to um, you do have the option to save a rubric as a draft now um, and you can change the criterion and rubric titles while something is locked this comes in quite handy if um, if you have things that are associated with an item so it's locked and you can't really you know mess with it without messing up the rubric um, this lets you at least change the title even though you can't change the points and things. So if you needed to say rename it for a prior term and you know change it up so you remember to, to make a new rubric for the next assignment or something, you can at least change some of the text fields um, without uh, messing up the association. Um, there's also a minimum and a maximum score for the criteria and a total weight warning. So if you're using um, you know, if you're you're doing the the uh, weighted rubrics, it'll tell you if it doesn't equal 100%. Um, and you can create criterion groups now. Um, there's also a group support. That's support for group um, assignments and group work. And um, you can use some basic formatting now in the description. So in the criteria. Um, or a rubric or a rating, you can make things bold or italic. Um, you don't have the full HTML or CK, CK editor, but you do have some, some basic formatting options. Um, in site info, you can now uh, publish on date. So if you want to schedule when your course site becomes available to students, you can set that up. Um, and you can also, um, when you merge, data from another course we've swapped the order so it used to be that replace was first and then merge but merge is the more more often used option so those have been um, kind of flip-flopped so that the first one is the more common use case in tests and quizzes um, user photos have been added um, so you'll see those over here next to the student names and um, there's also some notification email options that have been um, added here. So you'll see when those notifications go out, you can you can make adjustments there. Um, also in tests and quizzes, there were some major improvements in performance. Um, improved. Sorry about that. My dogs are. <laughs> Breaking. I think it's it's delivery time at, at the Hodges residence. Um, error handling around auto submit dates is better. Um, calculated questions print um, and display variables, and there's a warning message about multiple tabs. So just so you know, heads up if they're trying to take a test and they've got more than one tab open. Um, so anyway, those were all of the features that I highlighted. There may be some that I missed that I didn't get into my presentation. Sorry, I'm going to mute for a moment.
All right. Sorry. No, you didn't lose audio, Jordan. That was just me muting because of my obnoxious canines. <laughs> they're over there breaking like nuts at the delivery guy. <laughs> um, all right. Um, so anyway, those were the main uh, new features. I wasn't watching the chat. I did see it kind of go by. I don't know if there's anything that anybody wanted to comment on or any questions that you guys have um, that I missed as I was going along. Jennifer wanted to know it published on date. Can you set that globally? I'm not sure. Um, there, it might be uh, possible to do that globally. Um, I have to check. Let's see. Um, Dave says that they're not using the user specific dashboard, but they are using the course specific dashboard. So that's cool. Jennifer, like, do you, uh, this is Dave, you want, so do you guys have that set in there by way of policy? So that you, you said, you, you said earlier, we only let faculty merge so they can do that themselves, right? So we don't mind for our face-to-face -face faculty to actually do any of that course content import functionality, but we, we try not to allow our online courses to do that because we have, we have a lot of investment in those courses from a development standpoint. Um, so how does that work for you all? Wait, is it just not an available option because? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you said you have a customization that only shows merge and not replace. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, I Was that because? I settled down. <laughs> Keep going, okay. Dave. <laughs> Well, I, I was just asking Jennifer. I was asking what their what their what their their originating reason was for um, eliminating the replace option for most faculty. I'm, I'm, we we haven't done that, but we've been with Sakai for yeah, I know, over ten years. I, I'm not sure if this was the case at Walsh, but I know for some of our clients, they have problems with people replacing the wrong site. So they'll replace a, a uh, site with content with one that has no content, and thereby wipe out their content. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it's a one. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see the use case for that. Yeah, I can see that. We've only fortunately only had that happen a couple times, but I warned them very heavily not to do the import backwards or they clobber everything. Yeah, well, and I've told them that if you end up doing that, then you're just going to pull in from an older course. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah. At Pepperdine, we've had similar discussions. We almost we, we considered also, you know, should we hide replace because we would have people because it was the first choice, people would just go with it, assuming it was the best way to bring in a little bit of content to their already existing site. Yeah. Um, and so we we even just for like, just in case, let's just keep you with merge. And if you want to remove something afterwards, we prefer that than you wiping out an entire site because you were just trying to add, you know, one one piece of one tool yes uh, to your existing site yeah or they're going through and doing that because they're like this is how i get the other tools right no no no. you just go through manage tools and add right. a tool it's fine <laughs> yeah and we we also i mean part of that is obviously onboarding and we don't have mandated onboarding training so we're trying right. it's more of a, a harm reduction yeah, it yeah, is. it is. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, I hear you that on on that, uh, Jordan. 
So hopefully the swap in order will save people from themselves <laughs> a little bit. Um, <laughs> prevent some of that error of just picking the first thing. So yeah, yes. the, the first thing is a little more safe. Um, all right. Any other questions or comments about any of the new features? Um, to confirm, I'm, I'm, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I know the answer, but I just want to speak it. Those are exclusive to 23 or are any of those going to be um, back, you know, pushed, pushed to other versions like 22? Um, as far as I know, those are currently exclusive to 23, but we do sometimes backport things by request if it's something that will easily backport. If it's something that requires a lot of database changes, then usually it's the answer is no, because it's just too much work to bring it back. Um, but if it's something that's pretty easy to implement in an earlier version, sometimes we'll do those backports for folks. So it depends okay. so on I, the feature. Yeah. All right. So we should we should review a little bit a little bit more, and if there's something we see, we'll ask about it and see if it's back right. able to be backported. Correct. And Christina is saying that criterion groups are also in 22. Yeah. Uh, what are the criterion groups what, when you're describing that? What do you mean like? They're, if you they're are making it within a rubric, so you can have, mm -hmm. we've got some instructors who are using them. They actually were doing this before the criterion groups. They created criterion and removed all the ratings and just had the title and description there mm -hmm. and then had all the criterion below it, you know, related to, you know, this is mechanical, this is content, this is topic one, this is topic two. Oh. So okay. the criterion groups kind of serve as those headings for a collection of criterion. Got it. Okay. Yeah. But they, they also don't impend or impinge on people's ability to just create rubrics that don't have to have the criterion. No, nope, that's just a way if you want to add it's just a way to organize a heading in there to organize it. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I just I think we've been using we're on twenty two and I just didn't happen to notice. I think they were just over it just seemed like it ought to be that way. So you should see some of the rubrics our psychology instructors have. If they didn't have the criterion groups, it'd be nuts. Uh. <laughs> so I had a question with the dashboard. If it's on a course, does it look the same as that like front page that you showed, Wilma? Let me show. Like, what is the, the left on look the course like? site? I know the dashboard on the course site because we've been using it for probably two semesters or more. Um, it's got a you can you can modify the dashboard so it looks slightly different. It has different con different uh, layout. I think that's what it's called. Um, so you can modify that. There, or you can have those different widgets down there, or you can also choose which widgets you want to have appear. We've been removing the task widget and the grades widget because they don't seem like they quite provide good information, not necessarily good information, mm, helpful information to students. Um, but yeah, we and we actually happen to use option one uh, on the layouts. That's the one we use. Your, your default option. Um, yeah, I, and I think option two um, asks you to provide a course image, which option one does not. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we 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 throw an image in there in the in the the rich text editor in option one, and it it looks good for us. But, yep. Yeah, okay. option one is the closest to what overview looks like. Yeah. Okay. We'd Thanks. like to use the other one with the widgets here. Yeah, because on our yeah. current left navigation, we have things grouped with headings. So we have like course tools, communication tools, and then we have mm. some custom things like policies and things like that. So we nice. have to, we may want to rethink that then it sounds like from what this looks like and having those categories. Because if we can put them in as widgets, then we may not need those. Well, the, the widgets, are, there's only a, a certain number of widgets that are available uh, for okay. Dashboard right now. We're going to be adding yeah. more. That's the idea is that more widgets will become available as we create them. But right now, um, these are the only ones that you can add. So um, you can choose to remove the ones that are there um, if you aren't really using them. Um, but there's not like a widget for every tool. So, right. um, so these are the only ones that are available right now. And this replaces that overview page that we have now for courses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
So I put it on this sample course as an example of, you know, kind of that, that landing page for the course that gives a little bit of information about it and then maybe some, you know, information about discussions or tasks for the, the site. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And then the uh, user dashboard is this one and it just greets you by name and then you've still got the message of the day and you've got kind of your your task and announcements and things here um, similar to overview but not exactly the same right and will do i guess end users still can edit their dashboard layout? yes yes oh, they can oh, edit sort their of, own sort of their the arrangement they can move of. their widgets around they can they can remove widgets and they can move them around and that's about it um at least from the home area and there's not a great there's not a grades widget on the the user dashboard um that is something that you can turn on or off at the system level oh um, i believe it's in Sakai properties, so you can decide which widgets are available for people to view in the dashboard and which okay. location. So I think um, in Sakai properties on this server, maybe we turned it off because I'm not seeing it. Right. Um, unless, let me see, maybe it's just, oh, maybe I just, yeah, I just deleted them individually. We have them all turned on. Well, that's you can get the... The, the grades um, widget is also available there because that would be really advantageous for students if it's going to actually pull in the grades across courses. Yeah, that's kind of the I that was the original idea. I don't know if it's actually you know, doing what people want it to do. So we might need to tweak that a little bit once people actually start using it. Um, right. But yeah, that was the intention, I think. Um, <laughs> nice. I don't know if it's lived up to its potential there, <laughs> but it's always fixable. So, um, so yeah, if it's not doing what you expect it to do, open a JIRA and, you know, we can get working on it. Nice. Adrian says it does. What was that? It does. It does. That's great. Yeah. It, it wow. aggregates grades across, across your courses. Yeah. But, like Wilma says, maybe maybe there's a few bugs in there. I mean, it's only just come out of experimental, so I'm just glad people are using it. So you know, yeah, I would love to use to it. Some... That's the way because we'd love to be able to inform our students about how they're doing instead of having to jump into every course and go to their grade book area just to see how they're doing. It's nice to be able to see that at a glance. Do you know? I assume that's only pulling grades from courses that are published. Or do you yeah. know, Adrian? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. I'll have to play with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, try it out and let us know, you know, if it needs any tweaks, because uh, I think it could be really useful for folks if they start using it. So. Yeah, it would really help with retention and helping students know where they are in a course. and also gives us better leverage to push on our faculty and say, you need to be giving feedback to students. They need to know how they're doing. And this is mm -hmm. this is a good way for them to do that. Yeah, that's helpful. Yep. Yeah, I mean, if anybody's got any feature requests about particular particular widgets, like the grades widgets, you know, just just either either pass them on to to, to Wilmer or, or myself, or open a Jira ticket, you know, because like like I say, you know, it's been experimental for a while. This stuff, right? This is this is probably the first time it's been getting used in anger. So, you know, bring bring the tickets on. Yep, definitely. We can't fix it if we don't know about it. So <laughs> let us yeah. know. Um, and the idea is about it just, just working better, you know, what, what you'd like it to mm -hmm. do. Yeah, we're, we're all ears, you know. All right. So just to recap for those of you who haven't, oops, I don't want that. I just want to log in. I um, created a few sites on nightly just so you can see kind of the defaults. So this is the um, the navigation over here on the side. Again, the sites have moved um, over here into the vertical nav, but you can also expand and collapse from here if you wanted to um, jump to a particular tool or something like that. So you also have your, your recent sites um, 
and then you have your pinned sites. If you have a lot of sites, um, you might just want to pin the ones that you use all the time. But then if you have additional ones that you've been to, they're going to show up here, the most recent ones. And you can hover over any of these to pin or unpin a site. You can also go to all your sites and view everything. So you'll see here I have four sites. I'm only seeing three over here because I haven't visited this one. Um, so if I do go to it, then it shows up here, but it also shows up under recent. Um, so you'll see that the sidebar scrolls a little bit. It collapses areas that you're not currently in to kind of show you um, the current site. Um, so this is new for people. I'm sure it'll take a little bit of adjustment to get used to. So again, if there are um, any wrinkles that you are running into with your users or people are stumbling with the navigation for some reason, let us know if there's something that can be tweaked to make it easier for people to navigate that way. You'll also hey, well, know how do, you, how do you reset a tool um, reset in the a tool? navigation? Um, how do you reset you a tool? If you click on the tool itself, it'll reset it. Or if you click up here, these oh, kind of okay. take the place of the breadcrumbs. We okay. used to have breadcrumbs here that were like course and tool. And we moved yeah. it up here so you could see at a glance which course you're in. Because you can collapse this whole sidebar. It can go away. Which kind of mm -hmm. leaves you wondering where you are unless there's something that tells you. So right. we left right. the, the okay. title and the tool up here so you kind of have a sense of place. Um, okay. But you can also click here to reset the tool, or you can click here to go back. Like if I was in a different tool, I was in announcements, right. let's say. If I go here, it should, yeah, it takes me back to overview. So it kind of brings you back to the top level. Okay. Um, one other question I was kind of uh, curious about. There used to be, a, it's not the right word, and Christina, you might remember, there used to be a, a function inside of the tools where you could like, like focus on just the content area and not any of the navigation is that function gone now or was it only exclusive to lessons oh Do you know um, what i'm talking about it's in the top right hand yeah corner. you're There's talking a, about the um, four arrows that pointed we've had a couple people get lost area. with that yeah mm -hmm. we had a lot now. of people getting lost because they would expand the content area and they would yeah. forget that they had done that and couldn't figure yeah. out how to get their navigation back <laughs> so Which I, thought, I thought it was a great thing. It was a great thing. It's like just focus on your stuff. Just you know, push everything away, and you can focus on your stuff. But then they couldn't figure out how to get back. That that is gone. But it, you can okay. easily collapse the sidebar, which gives you almost as much real estate. You just yeah. have the, the bar at the top. Which um, I think is still helpful because it provides a sense of place. Yeah. So and you can get to things okay. like help and your other sites pretty easily, even with everything collapsed. That's good. That's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Any other Great. questions on the, the new nav? I did have um, a couple of JIRAs. Well, one was actually just a request. So this was from Dr. Chuck. He wanted to know um, if it was okay to get rid of the pinned heading when there are no pinned items. So he sent a picture. Let me show this. So this is a site, or this is a user that has no pinned sites. So you'll see there's a few recent sites, nothing pinned yet. And we had left that pinned heading so people would know that they could pin things. Um, now I should mention that we have it set up so that by default, when students are added to a site when users are enrolled in a new site they're automatic the site's automatically pinned um so it will be rare for students to have no pinned sites um, now faculty or people that are creating sites might not see the their created sites immediately so they might have to pin those um but anyway i just wanted to, to put that out there in case you were wondering um so, so how do people feel about this, um, the pinned heading? Is it something that seems um, superfluous, or is it something that you think should stay? Christina so, says she likes having it. OK. So the, just to confirm, you're asking if that the word pinned mm -hmm. should be there or not. Right.
And again, this is what it looks like once you have some pinned sites. Um, you've got your pinned section and then the recent section. And so those are kind of headings. Um, home stays up here at the top all the time because it's a different type of site. It's a user home. It's not really a course site. Um, and the recent here. auto populates, right? Yes, these will automatically just show you the recent. How many is it, Adrian? Is it the recent three or four, something like that? Uh, three, three. Yeah, most recent three sites. So the last one I was in was uh, discussion four. So that's the last one. Now your pinned sites. If if you go to a pinned site, it stays in pinned. It doesn't go to recent because um, we we tried a, a lot of different iterations there and it was confusing to people to have things jumping from one heading to another so we left it in yeah. pin it just kind of stays put so that it's predictable um, but if you go to a site that's not pinned it will show up down here in recent oh okay that's good so I, I have the yeah i had the same question as leanne in the chat um how many, How many sites, sites can you, can you pin? pin? I don't believe there's a limit. Adrian, do you know if there's a limit? Because you've got to scroll on the left. I mean, not that that's desirable, but I mean. Yeah, all the sites, Christina says. Uh, Adrian says <laughs> uh, lots of them. One godzillion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think there's a limit. So you can pin to your um, heart's content. My um, you can also is, what about, what about the order. Them. OK, yeah, I'm the order of the pinning. You can go to organize, and you can move them around. So if you wanted them in a specific order, you can do that. Um, and then it'll prompt you to reload. And then you've got your new order here. Um, so that part still works similar to what you did with favorites. You could organize favorites. Now you organize pinned. Um, but it's a similar kind of. And pin sites there. would not ever, pin sites will not, pin sites will never be in recent unless they're unpinned and then visited. Correct. Okay. So, like, for example, if I pin everything that I have and now I reload, um, I'm not going to see any recent sites anymore because they're all Got pinned. It. Okay. Got it. You can move these around and um, pin as many sites as you like. So, no limits there. Um, now, one thing to note when you, when you switch versions, um, all the favorites that people currently have, don't automatically get pinned. People will need to go and pin their sites that they want to keep. It kind of wipes the slate clean, so they have to yeah. go in and repin stuff that they really want to get to. But ideally, I think I'm okay with that. Favorite. I love that. Yeah. I think that's okay. I think that's a good. A lot idea. of people I collect honestly, sites that they yes, never yes, go it's to. Like clean out your clean out your junk. Like yeah, <laughs> clean the junk drawer. What do, you, yeah. what do you really need to have pinned? Christina is asking about the organize. Yes, that's under view all sites. If, if you go here, you can move them around. And I'll just reload. Now, another thing that, like I said, you can pin and unpin from view all sites. You can also do it from here. And it does it like right away. You don't have to refresh. So that was a nice improvement. And the, the, the pinned icon is dark on a light background versus an, there is no unpinned icon. Yeah, there's no, um, when I unpin something, it, it goes away. Yeah, the pin disappears. If That's you good. mouse okay. over it, you'll see an unfilled pin to indicate that you can pin it. But once you pin it, it's a filled pin. That's good. That was a, that was a little bit of the thing that I, I always, even though I figured it out, the, the favoriting uh, in 22 and, and before was always irritating because it was a star, but it was a star that was filled. But it was like I had people clicking on the wrong star to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully this is a little more intuitive. I know in the user testing that I did, a lot of people said that the pinning metaphor made a lot more sense to them than the stars. So hopefully that'll be more intuitive for people. Right. So where do we land with the pinned heading? We want to keep it. I saw a couple of people saying that they liked having the pinned, even when there's nothing I, pinned. It would be... So if there's no pin, then it just says no pin sites yet? Yes, it would, you'd have this. I like that it says no pin sites yet because I think it, to Christina's point earlier, I think it was Christina, it, it, it's indicative of, well, if there's no pin sites yet, that means I have the ability to do that. And I right. think 
I think that's I think that's better. Yeah, I, I agree. I just if anybody has a different perspective, though, feel free to yeah. chime in. OK, I will report that back to Dr. Chuck because he was the one asking about it. Um, there's another one uh, that Andrea was asking about. Um, it relates to the site icon. So this is, um, I don't know how often people use the site icon, but this is um, a JIRA that, let's see if we've got some images here. So it doesn't quite work the way that it did in earlier versions. So I mean, isn't the site icon something we've had since like 12? Yeah. Yeah, it's been around a long time. I don't know how often people actually use it, though. I, I think um, Andrea put a comment on there asking Earl to revert this one to take the icon away again, because we discovered dashboard image in layout two uses that same field. Uh, what? So if you put an image as the dashboard, as this one shows, it goes up as the icon. Interesting. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's that's because I have actually. Yeah, we've had a dashboard have... icon in most of ours for years, but it, it must not exist because it never shows anything. Yeah, because I have an image here and it's not showing, so we either have it turned off or we have a different. Or we have is there is there an issue with it showing? <laughs> that was a uh, recently, particular... that was a recently put in uh, fix. So I okay. you guys probably uh, don't have it on trial. Sakai yet? Yeah, probably not. But okay, well that makes sense. So yeah, she must have added that since that comment since um since I looked at it, put it on the agenda. But um okay, so yeah, so that's that icon's going away because it's going to cause trouble, I think, in the new layout. Um, but again, I don't think it was heavily used. Do do any of you folks use it? We used it for one um, specific project site, the Financial Aid Satisfactory Academic Progress Appeal site, just to put the Financial Aid Department's logo in the top corner mm -hmm. so it was very clear that it wasn't a normal academic site. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that was so I don't I don't think it'll be missed terribly. By a lot of folks because I don't think it was super common to to use so hopefully for the people that were using it it'll be a minor inconvenience to not have the icon anymore but um yeah because that did kind of create havoc with the the way it works over on the left so okay well that one is taken care of um does anybody have any other thoughts or anything they want to look at or talk about related to the UI before we move on to JIRA? So we have about 10 minutes left, or well, actually 13 minutes left. Um, real quick, does the question mark in the top right go to Sakai Help? Yes. Or Screen Step? It goes to Sakai Help, not Screen Steps. Okay. Yeah, it goes, although if you have it pointed to screen steps in your instance, then it'll go to your designated help location. So hmm. You have a place in properties where you can tell it where you want it to go. If you want it to go to the Sakai have... help or if you want it to go to screen steps. I'll have to talk to my other people and say, see if they would rather that because I, I prefer screen steps over the. Yeah, so you can you can point it either place. But um, to but it is context. That... Wilma, that, uh, at least for our instance, and when we had it recently, it always opened up in like a pop-up window. Does that, did yeah. that open up in a new tab? It, yeah, it opened in a new tab. So when That's I clicked great. on this, it came up in a new tab. That's great. And what does the search That's in the much top easier, right? much easier to share instructions with people using the, having the web address available. So that's great. Yeah. The and search the just search searches the, right the help. Here? It searches help. So if I type something in, no, not like, that search, not there. Uh, I'm sorry, Wilma. Um, back on the the UI. Oh, oh, oh. This search. Yes. Okay. What this does search, that search is Sakai, so it will search um, any tools <laughs> like, that participate in search in Sakai. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. 
search is not terribly predictable because <laughs> not well, all tools participate instance, we don't have search way. functioning yeah it, it's better than it used to be um i know we had disabled it for a lot of people because there were some issues with elastic search i believe um yeah Adrian, maybe you can correct me on the search stuff what was it? why was it that we had it turned off for a lot of people it was a licensing issue i thought with elastic search i thought yeah i think that's i think that's correct there's there's, there's various i mean it, it you know previous previous to elastic search i mean you know there were performance issues uh, mm. with search you know before before we brought in that mechanism where you had to add the actual search tool to the site for the site to be indexed and everything was getting indexed and i think people just lost immediately got spooked by the performance hit by all the indexing going on so we were fighting against that just you know like from, from from day one that perception of it um it's a lot more performant now especially since moving to elastic search um but yeah there's been that licensing thing as well well now on 23 i think we're using open search now so that that problem has now gone away and uh the latest versions of open search have also they've improved you know the sizes of the indices as well so there's you know you're using a, a lot less data on your uh on your sakai instance like where if you're hosting that index in you know amazon or whatever right you know like it can be can be an issue but that's way better as well so to, to me the the main problem with search at the moment is like wilma just um suggested is the inconsistency between tools just the way they implement the search interface you know like give access to their to their data we need to do some work on making that more consistent and you know, re reflecting to the user you know what portion of a tool has been searched but lessons being the classic some parts mm -hmm. of lessons aren't indexed some are right but the user doesn't really know that. they'll put something in like a I forget what part of lessons it is, but they'll, they'll they'll add some content and they'll search and it's not there, right? So other parts of lessons will come back, right? So that I don't think I don't think there's performance problems with search now. I think we've got we've got past that over the years, right? right? And the licensing thing is now now should be okay, right? I think we've backported the open search implementation to twenty two as well. So you know, hopefully that's that's okay in twenty two. Like I say, I think it's just consistency in the tools. That's, that's the yeah that's the issue that's the outstanding for me i think right yeah. that helps anyway, it looks cool doesn't it in the sidebar <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does it looks nice i don't really know what to yes, search for because all these sites are empty so they're probably not going to turn up anything um but i encourage you to try it um and if it's not behaving the way you expect, then let us know so we can you know, figure out what we need to provide in terms of, you know, more information for the user on how search works and which tools. Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking was, is, is being able to tell folks what the search is going to is useful for. There's a search there, but the search is right next to the sites menu, but you can search for your sites in the sites menu, the waffle, not necessarily using search that's next to the sites menu yeah this right. this just filters your your list basically right exactly yeah it's just a sites filter as yeah. opposed to the other thing this which would be more search across um all of your sites um or i don't know if well i think that's a, that's a question that i have i don't know if you can i think there's a way to limit it in your search terms but not everybody knows how to do that if you wanted to limit the right. search to a particular site so there's there's definitely some work we could do there to make it a little more transparent on right. what you can search for and how you need to do it. Right. In, in that same control. area, mm -hmm. I see that the there's the the waffle icon is there. Is that a holdover while people get familiar with 23? Because you have it on the bottom left, but everybody mm -hmm. coming from 21 to 22 are used to having the waffle icon top right. Yeah, we left it in both places. Um, and I think it's going to stay there. I don't think it's temporary just because if you do collapse the sidebar, you don't have a, an all sites link anymore, except for up here. Um, so you kind of need it um, to, so that you're not constantly opening and closing the sidebar. Um, it just depends on how you prefer to navigate. If you happen to be down here navigating, it's, it's quicker to go to this yeah. one. 
Um, yeah. And, and that view all my sites, <clears throat> that view all my sites is, I can see it's uh, separate from the scroll bar. So it's always visible in the bottom left as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's one thing that we changed is to make it float at the bottom. Um, so they yeah. don't lose it if you've got a long list. We we also just started incorporating the quick links into our version of 22. Is that something they're that would so also nice. be top right? Yeah, the quick links are still there. I don't think they're turned on in this um, instance, okay. but you, it, they would show up up here. It's, it's a link okay. icon, okay. Good. Um, and they would show here. And they are quite yeah, nice. And I was going to say, the view all my sites on the left-hand side does disappear when you collapse that sidebar. So despite the fact yeah. that it floats, it disappears when you tell the sidebar right you away. get the full you know width of the screen right. when the yeah. sidebar yeah. goes away but if the sidebar is there then it always floats it'll also be interesting to check and see how this works on mobile i haven't played with that at all it was designed to work well on mobile so um you know we i forget if the fuel sites goes away so it, it you get the waffle so you can get back to your sites but then you've also got um kind of the sidebar look when you expand the menu at the top so that's kind of what the, the mobile looks like and then it was designed uh, Roma, to work can't you, better hmm? can't you click on the sakai logo at the very top to go back to like the whatever the it's, yeah home that takes to you your back home. to your home mm -hmm. did, did that, that is that new um it didn't seem like that was remember the remember in prior versions i think you could always yeah. click on because it, on in our in our 23 we can't yeah in our 23 i knew when i was on our mobile i always wanted to get back to my home space and i couldn't because i was like i just i just want to because it didn't yeah. show and you should be able to click here to go back to home as well there's a home icon in right. the bottom okay yeah that's nice that's great yeah. that's and great then you're, account menu slides out so it looks very similar depending on um whether your desktop or such great improvements is. this is amazing yeah yeah there was a lot of really good work done on the um amazing work on the portal so thanks to adrian and kunal who's not here with us but they did the lion's share of the work on that so thank you guys Right. Well, it looks like we are almost out of time, so I don't think I'm going to tackle the next item on our list here, which is um, a Jira from from Alan about the CK editor. I think it's going to take us more than five minutes to dive into that one, so I will um, carry that one over to next time. Um, let me see when our next meeting is. I believe it's October fourth. Yes, October fourth will be our next. Um, call so hopefully you will join us for that and we will pick up with the um, the Jira's here and we might have an update from the um, Spanish folks on the, some of the improvements that they've made Miguel was checking with his his folks to see if somebody could give us a quick um, rundown of the most uh, most current um, improvements that they've added as part of that big unit digital plan. So we might have that next time. If not, I think we had um, talked about looking at Sakai properties and, and looking at some of the ones that are off by default that maybe we would want to have turned on by default so people know about them. So that's sort of an, an alternate plan if we don't have a, an S2U update. Um, that's the plan for next time. So in the meantime, I hope you guys will consider um, submitting for the virtual conference. We really need to get some proposals in. So I encourage you to talk it up among your colleagues and your faculty and your institutions and um, encourage people to submit a proposal. And it doesn't have to be anything like groundbreaking. It can just be a really well-designed course or a particular tool that they're using in an interesting way. Um, so, you know, any kind of shareable topic is, is great. So um, don't feel intimidated. Um, we definitely want to get some, some lightning talks in there. So um, hopefully you guys will submit. And I'll send out a few reminders to the, the um, Sakai user list 
to nudge people there as well. So, and my dog had to get one more bark session in before the end of the call. So she says bye. <laughs> All right. Take care, guys.